Hey everybody, Sean Kenna here. I just, uh, sorry if the filming is a little grainy, I wanted to make sure it was dark enough so you could really see the light in terms of these laser beams. I wanted to do a quick little demo um, over reflection and refraction just so you guys are making sure that you understand these terms and how they're used and, and what that means in terms of the ray of light that's coming through it. So what I've got here is a light producing object. In this case, I've got a nice little bulb and I've got it coming through a little filter here. So I have options here. This is, is set up for a single, but I also have it so that it's got multiples and we'll do that here in a little bit. So the first thing I wanted to do is go over some simple basic reflection. Um, the law of reflection is that the angle in equals angle out. So angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Now if I go ahead and grab a mirror like this and pull it in, if I look at it straight on, you'll notice that the light beam goes straight back on the same path that the light came in on. As we start to vary this angle, you can see that we end up with a new ray bouncing outward. Okay. As I go ahead and turn it, that ray gets steeper and steeper and steeper. But if we were to go ahead and to draw the perpendicular of the mirror, so if I can get in here, I don't know if I can do this through the camera, and draw the perpendicular, okay, angle here, angle of incidence, should equal the angle of reflection coming off on the other side. Okay, so when you go ahead and start thinking about reflection, this is the most important thing to remember outside of um, what we would talk about in terms of the smoothness of the mirror to go ahead and show us how clear the reflection is. This one's not perfect, and so it's, it's going to lose light as you go through, but the angle is pretty clean, so this must be a pretty polished mirror as we go ahead and start looking at. Okay, so again, angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And the steeper I make this, okay, the greater that ends up being, but the angle of attack is always the angle of exit. All right, and that's from the perpendicular, which is what we call the normal, okay? So that's the perpendicular, okay? I'm gonna pause real quick because the light just came on. Sorry, I'm back, okay. So what we've been doing so far has been using a straight mirror. Okay, but I want to show you that this actually applies whether the mirror is straight or whether the mirror is some other shape. Uh, you've seen at carnivals and other things, mirrors that aren't necessarily straight. And how does this work with respect to the mirror? Okay, so let's go back to our straight ray for a second. I'll go ahead and remove our initial drawings. And now I'm going to use a mirror that's curved. Okay, again, if I can get this straight on in the center, You'll notice that the result isn't any different than what we saw with the flat mirror. Now, when I go ahead and start making these movements, if I can go ahead and start turning it, you still end up with the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Okay, That's true whether we're dealing with a concave mirror. Remember concave, you walk in. Or whether you're dealing with a convex mirror. What you do notice, however, is that with the concave, if I have it angled this way, okay, it's going to go this direction. When I deal with this way, same thing, see? The angle is based on that point where it hits the actual mirror. So angle in, angle out. Doesn't matter if it's curved, uh, convex, okay, or concave or flat like we saw before. Angle of incidence always equals the angle of reflection. Okay, when we go ahead and start dealing with singular rays, that doesn't change. Now, here's one area, however, that will be different with a flat mirror versus a curved mirror. Okay, so if I line this back up again, this is a single ray coming straight in now if I take this off and change it to the three, okay, now you can see that I have three rays coming out. And while the center ray is going at itself and coming straight back out, the other two rays are actually a little bit off because they're coming in and going outward. This allows you to see that there's a little coming off um, to the top 
from the top ray and a little coming off the bottom for the bottom ray. But as we go ahead and start moving this, you'll notice that the angles all stay the same because it's a flat mirror. Okay, So angle in equals angle out. And the angles for each one of those rays is essentially the same, so they look the same coming in as they do going out. This will change when we go ahead and switch to a concave or a convex mirror. Let's start out with the concave. Now, a concave mirror walking in is what they would call a converging mirror. You'll notice that as the light rays come off the mirror here, they begin to come together and they will reach a point. So if I come in really close because of the separation, it can be hard to see. So maybe if I back out a little bit, you'll see a point up here, uh, here, where they come together. Okay, Those rays, which started out as being nearly parallel, are now converging. Because the angle of attack and angle of reflection are always going to be identical, the positioning of the mirror matters. That's changing that angle of attack, which is going to change the angle of reflection, causing those rays to converge or come together. Now if we switch that, okay, now we'll go to a convex mirror, you'll notice that the exact opposite is happening. Okay, instead of those rays converging or coming together, because the angles of attack are different in this case, that's going to cause the angles to be wider, which is going to cause those rays to separate out. This is a diverging um, reflection or a diverging mirror, causing those rays to separate. Now, if you think about what this does in terms of like carnival aspects, I don't know how easy this will be to see. When you go ahead and take a look at me in my phone, I don't know if you can see this because it's darker, this is the view that you see with a convex mirror versus this is what you see with a concave mirror. Okay. Yeah, can you see that? That this with the concave mirror, my image is actually upside down. Okay, versus the convex, which is going to be right side up. And think about this when we go ahead and start thinking about virtual images and we start thinking about upright or inverted, virtual or real, and then is it magnified or diminished, okay? So when you start thinking about how these mirrors work with reflecting light. So again, a flat mirror is going to go ahead and have essentially the same okay, angle of incidence, angle of refraction for every one of the rays, and so they stay parallel. When we go to a concave mirror, that's going to converge those light rays. They're going to come together. And then when I do a diverging or convex mirror, that's going to cause them to separate. See, there you go. That's an easier way to view that. So then in this case, you can see that they're actually moving apart and not coming to a single point. Okay? So concave, convex, and flat mirrors, angle of incidence, angle of reflection, is always going to be the same. This is the law of reflection.